Hey everybody, welcome to another better PHP video. Today we're going to be looking at PHP abstract classes. We'll understand what abstract classes are, how we can write abstract classes, what are the uses, and take a look at a practical example and see how we can use abstract classes in our programming. Now before we move on with what abstract classes are, let's take a look at an abstract class. Now here is an example of an abstract class. Now an abstract class is just a foundation class for another object, which means it's a class which would have a lot of functionalities defined, except it would allow one or two methods or one or two functionalities to be implemented by any class that decides to extend it. So taking a look at the sport class, what it means is, the sport class is taking in the participants here, it's setting the participants value, and it has a method which, uh, which is used to get the winner. But you'll notice that there is one method here which has absolutely no logic. It's not deciding how the winner is set. Now this method is called the abstract method. And any time a class has one or more abstract methods, then the class needs to be an abstract class. So again, an abstract class, like I said, is a class which has a lot of functionalities defined, except one or more methods are created in a way where there is no implementation at all. And so any other class that extends this class has to, and this is a rule that any class that any child class that extends an abstract class has to make sure it has a method, which is the set winner in this example. Otherwise, it would throw a fatal error. Now, in this example, what this means is the sport class is kind of like a foundation class. Now, there are so many sports. We have uh, race, we have swimming, we have high jump, long jump. And in all of these events, the way we decide the winner is different. And that's why we have everything that is common, like the set participants and a method which is public for us to retrieve information about who the winner is. All of this is available as a public method, but except how the winner is decided, the sport class is not going to decide that. Every individual sport will decide it. This is the practical use of an abstract class. Now, before we start using this class, uh, just a few things for us to note is that an abstract class needs to have at least one abstract method. Abstract method is what you see here is an abstract method. It has to have the keyword abstract and then the signature of the method, but no implementation. And anytime the, a class has an abstract method, the class has to be defined as an abstract class. Another very important thing to note is that you cannot instantiate an abstract class. Which means you cannot create an object of an abstract class. You can extend an abstract class and then create an object of the child class, but you cannot create an object of an abstract class. Also, when we're talking about abstract methods, uh, interfaces are also something that use abstract methods where Every method inside an interface is an abstract method. If you want to know what interfaces are, I will leave a link in the description with a video on interfaces. Do take a look at it and you'll get a really good understanding of interfaces and how they are different from abstract classes. So coming back to abstract classes, let's use this abstract class and see how it's used in a practical example. So let me go to the index page. Now, like I said, sport class, which is the abstract class, is a foundation class. So let's go ahead and create a child class. And I'm going to call this race. And this one is going to extend the abstract class. Now, one of the most important things for us to note is that anytime a class extends an abstract class, the abstract method has to be implemented, which means that we have to have a method which is similar 
to the signature, which is the exact same signature as the abstract method in the abstract class. Also, a few things to note is that when you're using this method, the signature has to be the same. Now, I cannot write the method set winner without this value. It will throw a fatal error. Similarly, even the access, the, the visibility of the function has to either be of the same level of security or it has to be lower, which means since I've defined this as a protected method, this either has to be protected or public. It cannot be private. Now let's create a very basic class. Uh, what I'll do is first I will take a, I will write a construct. And what I'll do is I'll take in some participants. And as if you see here, I'm taking the participants and I'm setting the participants value. So what I'll do is I will use that method dollar this set participants and I'm going to send that value here. Now all we need to do is we need to write the logic inside the set winner. Now let's say I also have a parameter here which is the record and I will, I will set this as false so anytime the uh, value again the value here is something that we'll use to identify the factor by which the winner is decided. So if it's a race, it's usually the minutes. If it's high jump, we'll use uh, let's say the height in uh, with uh, the height in the form of feet, and the winner will basically represent uh, the name of the winner or the name of the participant who is the winner. So let's go ahead and write some basic logic. So I will call I will use a variable called current record and I will set this as let's say 10 and let me say if the value is lesser than 10 then dollar this the record can be considered as true or set and also let me build a result I will say whatever the winner was sent as, I will have a, uh, a message for that, is the winner of the race. And I will check if he has set the record. I will say if all of this record, then I will add some additional information here and say, and he is the current record holder. Also, if you see here, the winner is, uh, the get winner will eventually return the property winner. So let's go ahead and set that. So I'm going to say dollar this winner equals dollar result. Now let's see, I have the construct, I have the set winner. Let me go ahead and create an object of this class. New race. And I will send in a value of participants. I will say Roger, let's say David, and let's say Peter. And let me go ahead and get the winner, which will be, I will send the winner as Roger, and I will say that he completed the race in 10 minutes. Now 10 is, you know what, I will, I will make this as nine. So nine is less than 10, so he would have set the record, and we'll see what we get in the front end. Now let me go ahead and print this we have an output. And if you look at this, it says Roger is the winner of the race and he is the current record holder. So coming back to the example. Now let's see why we needed the abstract class through this example. Now if you see here, this is the class that represents the event of a race. 
And the way we are identifying if the value or if the factor by which uh, the winner was decided, if he's a new record holder or not, is by seeing if it's lesser than the current time. But if this was a, if this was a class representing high jump, the way we would identify if the, if the value by which the, the winner won the high jump event is breaking the record or not, is not by seeing if it's lesser than the current value, but higher than the current value. And that's why this set winner cannot be the same, cannot be common uh, to a running race or to, let's say, uh, a time trial or let's say to, uh, to a marathon or a high jump or long jump because it keeps changing. The logic that we use to identify the winner keeps changing. And that's why this method, which is a set winner method in the foundation class, which is the abstract class, has no implementation. It just says, you guys, any child class, however you want to identify the winner is, it's up to you. But it is a rule that if you're going to use this, this foundation class, this method has to exist. Now, let me, let me show you how that is. If I if I'd created the race class and if I forgot to use the set winner method, I will get a fatal error. It says race contains one abstract method and must therefore be declared abstract or implement the remaining methods which are defined in sports set winner. Now, what this is saying is that you're implementing a class called sport, which is an abstract class, which has an abstract method called set winner, which you're not using. So that's why that's important. Also, like I said, even the signature has to be the same. So if I decided not to, not to pass the value uh, as a parameter, we are getting another error here. It says set winner, winner must be compatible with sports set winner, winner and value. This is a signature that it expects. This is a signature that you have used. So that's why when using an abstract class, we have to make sure that the abstract method is used and the signature is the exact same. Like I said, uh, we can now take the example of the high jump event. So let me just copy this. I'm just going to change the class name as high jump. Let's say the current record is eight. Uh, this is in uh, in feet, right? Now, like I said, the logic is the logic has to be different. It has to be greater than eight. Actually, I should be using this variable here instead of hard coding it. So here you can see that the logic is different. Here we are saying that the value must be lesser than the current record. Here we're saying the value must be greater than the current record. Again, here we can change um, the, the statement, which is, is the winner of not the race, but the high, high jump event. And he is the current record holder. Let me now call this new class. I will comment this. And I will call this high, high jump. And this is going to be high jump class. And let's say the winner of this is David. And the value is 9, which is, of course, greater than 8. But I'll say he jumped 10 feet. And let's see what happens here. We get the output that we need. David is the winner of the high jump event and he is the current record holder. I hope we have a good understanding of abstract classes with this example. Again, to summarize, where an abstract class is kind of like a foundation class where one or more methods have absolutely no implementation, only a signature, and those methods has to be used by any child class that decides to use the abstract class. In this case, set winner is that abstract method, and therefore, both the race class and the high jump class had to use the same method. But then the logic inside of it can be anything that each of the class chooses to. Well, that is it, guys. I hope now we have a good understanding of abstract classes. Uh, just to summarize, we took a look at how we can write an abstract class, uh, what are abstract methods, how to use them in child classes, and how it's used in somewhat of a practical uh, situation. If you understood abstract classes and if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel.
Thank you for watching.